I want to talk about the absolute most unhealthy diet in the world, hospital foods. I remember I broke my left shoulder. I had to get surgery in the hospital and they served me um, jello, orange juice, it was 100% orange juice, uh, yogurt, which is sweetened, and these little crackers, okay? And literally, when I woke up from the surgery, I was starving, so I ate that. And man, did that put me in a low blood sugar situation about, I don't know, a half hour later where I, I, my head was hurting, I felt sick, and I was extremely hungry and craving for sweets. Hospitals are a place you go to heal, right, and recover. Well, it's actually the worst place to go to recover. Let's talk about their meals. The meals are constructed with dietary concerns in mind. The problem is whoever came up with um, these dietary concerns um, needs to be majorly updated they're, because they're operating off of completely false information. Okay. Now, they contract out these meals with companies who specialize in preparing institutional foods. Okay, what are institutional foods? Well, foods that you would um, maybe serve in prisons, uh, maybe the school system, uh, governmental agencies, things like that. So these foods are designed for high volume, low cost. They're usually prepackaged, pre-cooked, and you just reheat them, right? The macros on these foods are typically with the proteins 10 to 35%. Carbs are between 45 and 60 percent of all the calories being carbohydrates. Well, that's pretty much the same as the SAD diet. Um, the food pyramid, 65 percent of your calories, carbohydrates. Uh, not the best recovery foods in the world. Fats should be less than 30 percent, but you have to make sure that the saturated fats are less than 10 percent. So you know they're using the unsaturated fats, soy, corn, canola oil, highly inflammatory. So here's some of the description of the foods. Uh, no trans fats, which is good, right? Low sodium, that's the common theme. For some reason, they have this thing in their mind that sodium is the worst thing you can possibly consume. Uh, well, guess what? When you're healing, when your adrenals are stressed, when you have high cortisol, uh, you're losing sodium and you need more salt. Salt is very, very important. 100% fruit juice, right? Well, that's good. Um, that's 100%. 1% or no fat dairy, okay? The lower the fat that you go with dairy, the higher the insulin spike, FYI. They use milk substitutes like soy. Uh, yogurt, they recommend less than 30 grams of sugar per eight ounce. Now, 30 grams of sugar, that's like, uh, what, seven and a half teaspoons of sugar in just that little bit of yogurt. That's crazy amounts of sugar. Okay, we have low sodium cheese, whole wheat, whole grain type foods, dinner rolls, muffins, bagels, tortilla, uh, must contain less than 290 milligrams of sodium. Again, they're focused on lowering sodium, but what about all the carbohydrates? Terrible. Uh, cereal, again, recommend uh, less than 215 grams of sodium. Dried cranberries, raisins, which are loaded with sugar, are not included in the sugar uh, content. The canned beef and the canned vegetables should have low sodium. The frozen French toast should have less than 480 milligrams of sodium. Wow. Uh, snacks should be added to help curb hunger. What they're missing is that the snacks are going to spike insulin and you're going to have more inflammation. And it's going to make the person very, very hungry and fat. And they recommend at least five servings of vegetables per week. Not per day. Per week. So this is definitely not recovery food. It's inflammatory foods. I highly recommend you do either one of two things. You fast when you're in the hospital or number two, you bring your own food. So go ahead and comment down below and tell me your experience uh, in the hospital if you've been there recently. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.